Patty Cornwolf is one of the founding directors and mentoring mothers of Kindred World, an American grassroots nonprofit founded a quarter century ago by parents and professionals advocating for holistic wellness models and family friendly policies. The consciousness raising nonprofit was found in the middle of America's 50 year decline to the bottom of all developed nations' rankings for child wellness, according to the United Nations. Today, Kindred World still exists in many initiatives, including the Kindred Media Initiative producing the Meet the Wayfinder series. Today, Patty is a labor and delivery nurse with three grown children. When she is not tending to moms and babies, she travels the country with her husband in search of the best rock climbing and mountaintop views. So thank you so much, Patty, for coming on and talking with me. Um, Absolutely. I can't wait to hear your story. And you can start out by talking to us about um, your first exposure to breastfeeding. Uh, sadly, I didn't have much first exposure. I was formula fed as a child, not even just formula. My mother fed me caro syrup and evaporated milk. So even worse than formula. Um, and I didn't really have much exposure. And uh, when my first child was born, none of my friends, I had one friend who had a baby, but she didn't breastfeed. And I just... I guess I just innately knew that was the best thing for, for my child that, you know, that's what I was supposed to do. These breasts are on my body for a purpose, not just for decoration. And I, I really just got lucky that things went well with her. Uh, we didn't really have any problems. Um, and, and really it was, a it was a success. Um, I guess the, the biggest issue for me, like going on down the line, three babies later, <clears throat> is that I, I felt strongly about child-led weaning, about um, letting them nurse until they, they, were, they said they were done. And without the support of other mothers around me, I don't know if I could have done that because my children ended up wanting to nurse for a very long time. My last one was four and a half. And, uh, and you know, I, of course I got a lot of sideways looks and, but without the support of my, my friends and my fellow mothers, I don't think I could have followed through with the child-led weaning and have it be that successful for that long. So that was a barrier, uh, trying to find support for child-led weaning and what's also known as full-term breastfeeding, which uh, you know, the average age of weaning, uh, should we follow our homo sapien path to wellness is around four, four and a half and can yep. go as long as seven and eight years. So Correct. what did you do about that barrier, Patty? How'd you go around it, over it, under it, through it? Uh, that's a really good question. And, and I, again, just kind of dumb luck. I didn't have like-minded friends at the time. I happened to go to the grocery store and I found a loose leaf sheet of paper hanging on a bulletin board with, uh, her name was Brenda. And she said, looking for other moms interested in raising children holistically, need support. And I went, me too. So I tore off the little tab underneath and I called Brenda and <clears throat> we got together in her backyard and I invited another friend and she invited two friends. And before we knew it, we had a group called Mothering Friends that was the backbone to my experience as a mother and to many other women in the same city. But sadly, I mean, that was 30 years ago. That was before the internet. That was before, you know, it, things were more accessible. We had to do things the old school way, which is, you know, tear off a thing at the grocery store. And I just was so fortunate that I just stumbled upon that, but it shouldn't have to be such a random occurrence to find support. It should be more accessible. For, for women, this, am I making sense? <laughs> yes, <laughs> and, and this, so this is, uh, you know, you, you were a part of the early mothering friends and you moved from Virginia Beach to Williamsburg I did. and became a part of the, uh, the Families for Natural Living is what it was yeah. originally. You're one of the founding board members uh, at that time. It was a very different world back then as far as uh, home, home birth was still um, illegal, you know, quote unquote yes. states. Homeschooling parents were a little afraid of being uh, um, um, arrested even for Correct. homeschooling and keeping their children out of school. And then, you know, this is where I met you. 
and I, I came into the family supernatural living circle of moms in the park and that the story that I've told for 23 years now, I'll just tell it. I'll just tell it. It is. Okay. <laughs> it's that, it's that um, I come into this, uh, you know, I had a high risk pregnancy. I had um, uh, been in my house and in my head about what is it to be a mother, checking all the boxes, reading the books, uh, making sure, am I doing this the right way? So when I was invited to come to this group, um, I had to drive to get there from Williamsburg for one thing. That was a big deal, put my baby in the car, go that far, but I was desperate for community. I could feel it, you know, the salmon going up the river uh, yes. feeling. And, uh, and I, I, got take, I remember taking my son out of his little car seat, putting him in the little wheelie, which is funny now because we know all about attachment parenting. You know, I put him in a little, <laughs> little stroller, I wheel him over, I sit down, I, I turn away shyly a nurse and, and turn back around to this group. And I, I finally arrive in this group and start to settle in. And it really was, you, you all had a huge group of moms back then. We did. Uh, you know, 30, 40 moms in this big circle and what I saw and experienced was mothers who were comfortable in their bodies relaxed uh, nursing babies uh, nursing toddlers and I remember this moment when uh, a toddler came running through the middle of the circle I think a two or three year old jumped into your lap, it was your lap at the time. I don't know if he lifted your shirt or you lifted your shirt, but you didn't miss a beat and you kept talking to the other moms and passing food and just, and it was that embodiment of such uh, confidence and knowing what you were doing did something. And I, I, for years said, I don't care if you call it somatic psychology, quantum physics, or monkey see, monkey do. But Patty Ogden, your Patty Ogden's <laughs> breasts. <laughs> I, I unleashed this, uh, you know, pushed me across this threshold into motherhood that I knew what I was. And I had this big aha, this DNA moment happened and I unfolded and I was like, oh, I'm a mom, <laughs> I'm a mother. I had, you know, my son there. I was like, oh, we're going to be okay now. But that group of um, mothers and, and dads came eventually uh, and, and some of the meetings uh, was uh, felt like a life raft to me for yes. so long. Yes, I had to have that to survive and to and to have backup for what you were describing, which was I just felt innately like I have to do this. Yes, uh, also child led weaning full term, and um, and and that coming across any of that kind of whole child wellness model at that time was not. Well, it just wasn't mainstream, and we didn't have the internet. Right. Thank Correct. you, Patty. Well, Thank I'm you, so Patty's happy breasts. That, <laughs> I'm so happy that my breasts made such a large impact on you. <laughs> <laughs> and I, too, with the support of that group, just that simple, just sitting around in a circle um, and having that support, I mean, it, it actually pushed us, you and I, and several other women to go on into more activist roles. Um, and I definitely would not have had that backbone had it not been for those those groups, those the, the support, um, the community. It's crucial. It is I crucial. Think. Yeah, for this series, Kamari Bug said that uh, the way she and uh, women in the Black community, who she talks about being so exhausted have kept up their stamina is by the, she says the oxytocin available to you in community is like that oxytocin you get through breastfeeding. And yes. that is <laughs> a big, <laughs> a crucial piece to stamina and keeping on keeping going uh, for, for breastfeeding advocacy or anything. Um, but I, I think, you know, what I really wanted to point out here at this, um, this part of the series is that you and I are women who have been, our children are grown and gone now. Yes. We were waiting a long time for the big systemic pieces to drop to support us in uh, public um, policies that would support families in this country. What we didn't know at that time, a quarter of a century ago, is America was in the middle of a fall to the bottom of a 50-year fall. 
to mm. all international indices for maternal child wellness, infant health and wellness, adult wellness now. Um, so this salmon swimming upstream feeling that I had and felt was uh, empowered in a group of women um, nursing uh, has stayed with me. And, yes. and, I, and so because this is for the La Leche League conference, I just felt like I needed to be able to present this piece and say, now, everybody I've interviewed have talked about these big systemic pieces that need to change, but what are we going to do in the meantime when our kids are growing up and we need support now? And La Leche right. League does offer that. You yes. Know? It, it matters a lot. It, it does. I attended many, many La Leche League meetings back in my early mothering days and, and even advanced mothering days because I felt at that point after I had successfully breastfed three children into their toddler years um, uh, that, that I, you called it earlier, a mentoring mom. And I felt like from what I received back in my early days, I wanted to give back to those new mothers. So I kept going to those meetings even though you know I'd already had three successful experiences, but I just wanted to help, uh, not just with the breastfeeding. I, I actually took it further from the support I got from the those early days. I um, became a childbirth instructor. I became a doula. Uh, I worked with two home birth midwives. Attended many home births. Um, went on to be a labor and delivery nurse myself, and uh, so I. I, again, I don't know without the, that support early on. I mean, it was life life changing, and that's and I'm not saying that lightly. It, it changed the course of my life. I was a teacher before; <laughs> I was a second grade teacher, and uh, I and I made a complete 180 in my life. And it's been it's been a fabulous career, and um, and being able to help women in the hospitals who are on the fence about breastfeeding, and all I need is that little crack in the door. And I'm walking through that crack. I'm gonna, I'm gonna open that door for them, and and give them as much support as I can because those first days are so important for establishing a healthy breastfeeding relationship. And I'm, I'm there for that. And I still continue to work for that for women and for babies. Thank you so much, Patty. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you for everything you have done and continue to do. And I look forward to showing your uh, pictures of you uh, rock climbing <laughs> at the beginning of this, uh, because you're, you get to do the go around the country and work in different hospital settings. So you probably have quite a bit of a uh, number of stories to tell about that experience. But but you're there. They don't even know what's coming through the door when the, when Patty Cornwall shows up to support <laughs> all <the> babies. <laughs> Today. <laughs> no, they do not. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Patty. Thank you so much, Lisa.